If I was just beginning my own pottery journey, what would I do to help me find my own unique pottery voice or own style? What is up, Shaping Nation? This is Nick Torres here, and for those that don't know me, it is my mission to help potters like yourself discover their own unique voice, and I do that by giving you tricks and tips I have learned along my own pottery journey. So what would I do if I was somebody new and looking to discover my own unique voice in pottery? So the first thing that I would do here is that I actually wouldn't really focus too much on trying to find my own voice, my own style. It would be in the back of my mind because I'm somebody that doesn't want to be the same as everybody else. It would be in the back of my mind for sure, but I would try not to focus on that too much. I wouldn't try to focus on trying to sell my pottery either because that could also be detrimental to trying to find your own unique voice. Let me explain this thought real quick. So I talk a lot about trying to find your own unique voice with your own pottery. And I give you, I try to give you tips that will help you along the way. Hopefully, I am doing a good job with that. Either way, why do I suggest saying why you shouldn't focus on that first? So what, why I wouldn't focus on that first? The reason is, is because if you're only trying to focus on make a certain style come to life, that style will never come to life because now you're just forcing it. You're forcing it, and it's never going to come to life. Because you're only focused, you're only trying to focus on that, but you're not seeing the bigger picture of your whole pottery. Because if you're only trying to focus on that, then your skills are going to suffer significantly and you're not going to be able to make the pottery that you can truly make. Because your only sole focus is trying to find your own style, try to be different, but your skills are going to be solely, solely, solely lacking that it's just never going to happen. Same thing if you're trying to only sell your pottery if you're only trying to make pottery to sell. I know I went through that phase myself for a long time where I was making a bunch of mugs thinking that I would make a bunch of mugs because they would sell. If you only focus on trying to sell your pottery, then you're not going to be making pottery that you truly enjoy. And the whole thing about trying to sell your pottery is that you have to learn how to market your pottery first so that you can sell it. And that's a skill, a whole different skill that I'm still also trying to learn myself. But back to the point of those are the two things that I I wouldn't focus on first. I wouldn't focus on trying to actually find my own voice. So the second thing that I would do here is I would actually try to surround myself with as many different potters, even different artists as I could, as many as I could, whether it's starting and talking to to potters by starting a podcast, or maybe it's just interviewing people for your own pleasure, just trying to learn from them, taking workshops, going into and joining a community studio. I would try to surround myself with as many different artists and many different potters as I can, because this is going to be where your your growth is going to be exponential. I contribute being able to find my own unique voice and being able to find it quickly to This podcast, because I get to speak to so many different potters every single week, I get to learn something every single week. So I'm surrounding myself with those people, and those people are giving me new ideas for my own pottery. Like I'll give you for an example. So I think it was about my fourth or fifth episode that I recorded was with Dallin Dallin Weber. Dallin makes some really incredible like sculptured pottery onto his mugs, and I thought that was so so cool. And that began to give me some new ideas with my own pottery. And then a little down the road, I met somebody else who made double-walled mugs, Jordan Coons. She makes some double-walled mugs, and I thought that was so, so cool. And I thought if I could create mugs, a double-walled mug, and then apply to my skills of sculpture, I could apply those two skills together and combine them into one, and it make such a cool mug. And I love that idea. But I wouldn't have gotten those ideas if I just was sitting back passively trying to figure out everything by myself. Because I am able to go out and talk to potters every single week, I get to, I get to talk to them, and I get to build up my skills gradually, and I get new ideas very, very quickly, and I get to learn things. You can do the same thing as well by simply taking workshops, or joining community studios. Those are the two fastest ways that you can be surrounded around other potters or just simply learn from other potters and get the skills necessary to go faster that you want to go. Because each new skill that you, you build is going to add to your own pottery voice. So 
those so here is a little bit quick of a recap before I go into point number three. So the first one is I wouldn't focus on trying to find my own voice and I wouldn't focus on trying to sell my pottery. Point number two is surround yourself with as many potters and many artists as you can because this is going to speed up your growth exponentially. Finally, the third and last tip that I would give you if you were if you were looking, if you were a beginner, you're looking to try to find your own style, stand out from the crowd, is simply fail a lot and make a lot of pottery. You have to be able to get comfortable with failure because pottery can be very humbling. You may you may be on a roll one week, one month. You're starting to get things. And all of a sudden you put things in the kiln and boom, something fails. Something breaks, something explodes. All the rest of your pottery explodes and makes it everything worse because one thing broke. If you let that, you know, deter you from the idea that you have, then you're never going to be able to make your pottery voice come to life. You have to be okay with being able to fail and you have to make a lot of stuff. You have to build up those skills and the fastest way to do that is to make a lot of stuff. If you make a lot of stuff, then your skills are going to grow that much faster. The more stuff you make, the easier it's going to become to actually find your own unique voice. So here, here they are again with the three things I would do. Number one, I wouldn't focus on trying to find my own unique voice. I'd focus on building skills, focus on building up my party, make my party look better and better each time I make it. Number two is I would surround myself with a bunch of different potters and a bunch of different artists. And finally, number three, learn to fail a lot. I would learn to also make a lot of pottery. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys in the next one.